Mad scientists are just a thing of fiction, right? Right? Well, unfortunately for us, that may not exactly be the case. These are the top 10 evil human experiments performed by mad scientists. And if you think you know someone who belongs on this list, tell us about them in the comments below. Number 10. Stubbins Firth. When the yellow fever epidemic broke out in Pennsylvania, the University of Pennsylvania was conscripted to help find a cure. One of their many prestigious doctors was a man by the name of Stubbins Firth, and this man had a mission. He was determined to understand the root cause of the disease, and nothing would stop him from ensuring that this evil was defeated. Firth theorized that yellow fever was not a condition contagious disease, but instead related to the heat of the summer. To prove this, Firth decided that he would perform an experiment with himself as the subject. Firth then smeared himself in the bodily waste of patients infected with yellow fever, rubbing it into cuts on his arms, pouring it in his eyes, frying it and inhaling the fumes, and when that all didn't work, he just ate it. and. Well, he didn't catch the disease. However, it didn't actually end up proving anything about the disease, as the samples had come from already recovered patients. Years later, after his death, Cuban scientist Carlos Finlay would then correctly attribute the root of the disease to mosquitoes. Number 9. Paracelsus a deeply important figure to the world of medicine, Paracelsus was a Swiss doctor, philosopher, and just general weirdo. One of the key figures during the German Renaissance, he's known as the father of toxicology and a practitioner of hermeticism, wandering around the world before eventually taking up residency in Germany and teaching from the University of Basel. He was reportedly quite unstable, frequently under the influence of spirits, refusing to accept conventional medicine, and outright burning books he didn't like in protest, and just, you know, generally being a little freak. He claimed, get ready for this one, that it was possible to grow a man by fermenting sperm inside of a jar of horse dung, an experiment which he carried an example of with wherever he went. Number 8. Jose Delgado all right, everyone else on this list is pretty evil. The last two were just, you know, kind of funny. Jose Delgado was a Spanish doctor who worked out of Yale University. His research, on the other hand, was deeply disturbing. The neurologist's primary interest focused around the stimulation of responses in the brain using electricity, which he hoped to be able to use to force the brain to produce the thoughts and emotions that he wanted. In other words, actual mind control. And if that isn't terrifying, enough, he also ran experiments on anyone he could find, which usually ended up being people who were either schizophrenic or epileptic. One of his more famous experiments was the one where he used a remote control device to make a bull stop its charge. Number 7. Robert Liston Liston is an infamous surgeon who worked in the Victorian era. He quickly earned a reputation for being the fastest knife in the West End, and being able to amputate a leg in two and a half minutes. That did happen, by the way, and the patient died of gangrene. He also amputated one of his assistant's fingers for some reason, and uh, they also died of gangrene. Oh, and then, for some inexplicable reason, he lashed out at a surgical spectator who died from shock. What? I, either way, Liston was also known as the first surgeon to use anesthesia in Europe, so... Wait, no, what? Number 6. Giovanni Aldini If you don't know this guy, you'll know who he inspired. An Italian physician, Aldini worked primarily in the application of galvanism to the medical profession, which was the study of passing electricity through the nervous system to induce movement. His most famous experiment was in how he stimulated movement in the body of an executed criminal in London, which was recorded by the Newgate Calendar. Quote, On the first application of the process to the face, the jaws of the deceased criminal began to quiver, and the adjoining muscles were horribly contorted, and one eye actually opened. The report goes on to describe how the legs and hands were moved as well. A fearful visage for any bystander. Number 5. Andrew Yur. 
But this inspiration didn't just stop with Aldini, where the Italian walk, you're sprinted. Working as a professor of natural philosophy, Yur would establish himself as a well-respected scientist, with a wide variety of focuses that he could claim mastery over. However, when Yur was approached by his friend and professor of anatomy, James Jeffrey, to aid in an experiment, Yur's writings on what happened next would catapult him into fame. Jeffrey had been working on a similar experiment to Aldini's, using the body of a criminal as a test subject and stimulating movement through the phrenic nerve. In 1890, Yur would record an incident where Jeffrey would display his discovery to the public, first moving limbs, then stimulating the eyes to open, and finally causing the contortions of muscles in the face to create terrifying expressions. Members of the crowd reportedly sprinted from the room in horror, and one man was even recorded to have fainted. Number 4. Robert Nelson one of the stranger entries on this list, Nelson's experiments could be argued as something between evil and just misguided. As it turns out, that division is pretty hard to define, as Bob Nelson's ultimate end goal was the ability to resurrect anyone. Starting as a TV repairman, Nelson would partner with an actual doctor by the name of Dante Brunel, and they would begin to develop a machine to preserve people in an early form of cryostasis. Putting out a call for subjects, they found themselves with an offer from James Bedford, a professor dying of kidney cancer which had metastatized into his lungs. As Bedford passed through legal death, Nelson and Brunel went about preserving his body with the hopes that he could be resurrected when the cure for cancer was discovered. Pumping his blood full of antifreeze, they stored the body in Alcor, the first of what would later number in the hundreds. Number 3. Robert G. Heath This scumbag was a psychiatrist working out of Louisiana, with his primary study being deep brain stimulation, or DBS. Heath proposed that through DBS, he was capable of influencing anyone to be able to change their mind, and thus he could cure mental illness through electrical stimulation. His claims were absurd, stating that he had successfully managed to give patients schizophrenia through blood transfusions and electrical shocks. As most of those patients died, it was fairly difficult to confirm this. He also claimed to find the cure for being gay. He claimed that he'd managed to quote unquote cure a patient of being gay, since that was actually considered a mental illness at the time. It's also implied that he had an involvement with the project MK Ultra, though this remains unconfirmed, but extremely plausible. Number 2. Ilya Ivanov A Russian scientist, if you couldn't tell immediately, Ivanov was a particularly strange scientist, the majority of his experiments revolving around two things. The first was the perfection of the method in which artificial insemination was done, which allowed for easier access to the technology, which was primarily used by horse breeders. His second interest was weirder. Ivanov apparently was extremely interested in creating a human-ape hybrid. Fortunately, he only attempted to do this through artificial insemination. Ivanov failed to create a pregnancy, but his legacy lives on as one of the most odd experiments ever conceived. Like, just why? Number 1. Shiro Ishii. There's not much to say about this man, and at the same time, there is so much more that needs to be said. Ishii was the Surgeon General of Unit 731, the perpetrator of one of the most notorious and vile series of experiments the world has ever witnessed. Some of these included infecting subjects with the plague, using live subjects for weapons testing, forced pregnancies, vivisections on live and aware subjects, and the induction of frost fight on live subjects. When Japan surrendered, he attempted to destroy the files that would indict him, but failed. Didn't matter either way, as he was granted war crime immunity by the US government and later employed by them to advise on bioweapons. I'm not joking. This man is a monster, did monstrous things, and got away with it scot-free. The Japanese government has not taken responsibility for the actions of Unit 731. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a good one.